What's going on, beautiful people? And welcome back to another Star Wars lore video. I am your majestic sayer of words, Supercliff. And if you guys are new to this channel, then please do me a generous solid by smashing that like and subscribe button because every little bit helps in this crazy, uncanny YouTube world. Alrighty, folks. So today we're going to be talking about the Supreme Commander of the Separatist Droid Armies, General Grievous. Now, General Grievous is one of the most popular Star Wars characters of all time. He's one of the main antagonists during the Clone Wars era. He's a favorite among meme culture, and he's also my favorite Star Wars character. However, many people will say that Grievous, at the end of the day, is just your typical cool looking bad guy. His main purpose was to lead the droid armies, kill Jedi, and to sell countless amounts of action figures for the upcoming Revenge of the Sith movie. Oh, and did I mention Grievous goes into battle wielding four lightsabers? Because if I didn't, <laughs> then let me state this for the record. General Grievous goes into battle wielding four freaking lightsabers. That is awesome. And sure, while everything I just mentioned was part of his role, it wasn't his main purpose. It wasn't his essential role for existing. Despite Grievous being a brilliant military strategist and a prominently skilled fighter, we have to look at the bigger picture here and we need to remember that at the end of the day, the Confederacy wasn't created to win the Clone Wars. And so because of this, General Grievous' significance within the Clone Wars is actually less noticeable and much, much more sinister, and therefore extremely vital to the Sith's grand plan in taking over the galaxy. General Grievous was utilized by Darth Sidious as a scapegoat, a distraction for the Republic. And on top of all of this, he was marketed as the embodiment of pure evil, as an agent of chaos. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you may be asking the question, well, what about Count Dooku? Wasn't he an actual Sith Lord and, and the leader of the Separatist movement? Yes, person watching this video, you are absolutely correct. However, when it comes to Dooku, the actual chairman of the Confederacy, he was veered as a political idealist. He would regularly present himself with a calmly manner. He was skilled in justifying his actions, recruiting allies to his side, using his natural charm and intense gravitas, and rarely did he involve himself within the actual military conflicts of the Clone Wars. Basically, to put it in perspective, Count Dooku wasn't scary. To most, he was just your well-spoken old man, whereas Grievous was absolutely terrifying. General Grievous represented pure evil. Throughout the entire war, Grievous would bomb civilian base populations, unleash countless amounts of biological weapons, and he was prone to attack medical facilities. If there was ever a trophy for whoever committed the most war crimes, Grievous would win it. In addition, Grievous' role as a sheer force of hatred was something those among the Republic had to hear and witness every single day. For three years straight, throughout the entire course of the Clone Wars, Grievous' horrid reputation was stapled within the minds of the Republic. If someone were to ever picture the Separatist movement, the image of Grievous, a psychopathic killing cyborg, would immediately come up, resulting in the Republic of becoming radicalized against the ideas of Separatism and Rebellion, which was what Sidious wanted. Sidious wanted the Republic to view Rebellion as a form of savagery, because whereas Count Dooku and, and various high-ranking Separatist leaders held legitimate feelings and beliefs within their political movement, Grievous could give a damn about any of it. I am no errand boy, and I am not in this war for Dooku's politics. I am the leader of the most powerful droid army the galaxy has ever seen. In addition to not having any stakes for the, for the Separatist cause, the purpose of Grievous was to also make the Republic racist. Remember folks, Sidious was very much for making the Empire humanoid centrist, as a means of making his control over the galaxy much easier. Sidious knew that by creating a hierarchy among the common citizenry, it would help sow a powerful base, a foundation for his control, hence as to why a majority of the CIS were alien, with many of them being affiliated with systems from the Outer Rim territories. With Grievous being a Kalish, this only helped to spark the belief that aliens were barbaric, that they were chaotic, and the only way to ensure peace and stability was to institute order and structure throughout the entire galaxy. Lastly, Grievous' role was also the brand of belief that the Jedi were not invincible. Now, obviously we know that just because you're a Jedi, it doesn't mean you're unstoppable. But prior to the rise of the Galactic Empire, Jedi were veered as celebrities ancient monk warriors who were extremely powerful with a magical power called the Force. 
Many a times those unaffiliated with the Order took on the belief that only a Jedi can kill another Jedi. In The Phantom Menace, we see exactly how the Jedi are praised when Qui-Gon Jinn and Anakin first meet. Anakin, a young nine-year-old boy, expresses his limited knowledge that no one can kill a Jedi, to which Qui-Gon's response is soft and humble, saying, I wish that were true. You know, Qui-Gon, he doesn't brag about it. He doesn't say, well, Jedi are awesome, therefore we're amazing. Now take that honorable lens view of the Jedi and add General Grievous. Grievous was a monster, a cybernetic killer, a being who wasn't affiliated with the Jedi nor the Force. But yet despite being a non-Jedi, Grievous nonetheless wielded not one, but four lightsabers, weapons heavily known to be primarily wielded by the Jedi. Thus by wielding these weapons, Grievous killed countless Jedi. Now whether or not this is true amongst the current canon, but according to legends, Grievous killed more than 200 Jedi during the Clone Wars, and the only Jedi killer to succeed that number was Darth Vader. Grievous not only killed Jedi, but he was also providing a crucial interpretation. Whether he realized this or not, Grievous' actions were essentially saying that the Jedi were mortal and that they could be stopped, and above all, they could be killed. Grievous taught the galaxy the Republic didn't have to rely on the Jedi for securing peace. All the Republic needed was a large army of clones. Grievous showed the galaxy that the Jedi were vulnerable. And so at the end of the day, although General Grievous was your typical bad guy, his role at the end of the day was actually significant for Grievous' presence during the Clone Wars not only prolonged the war, but he helped Sidious to obtain political powers whilst radicalizing the Republic citizens so that when the Jedi would, quote, rebel, no one would in any way, shape, or form argue the destruction of the Jedi Temple. No one would argue the destruction of the Jedi Order. And yeah, that will conclude this video. And my god, Disney, please give us some more General Grievous. Please. <laughs> now, we probably don't need it, but regardless of whether or not we do, I, I would very much like that. But yeah, tell me what you guys think. What are your thoughts regarding General Grievous? What else that, maybe not at first glance, helped to institute the Galactic Empire? Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Follow me on my social media accounts such as Insta and Twitter. And if you guys like this and you want me to do more Star Wars videos in the future, then please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching and until the next video, peace and may the force be with you.